Hello and welcome to the General's Reviews. I'm Chris McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80 from the Full Force Podcast, and I'm joining Justin Bell from What's On Joe Mind and General's Joes to bring you this review of the G.I. Joe Collectors Club FSS4 Interrogator. Before Justin takes a look at the figure, let's go into the history of the character from his first appearance through to now. Interrogator version 1 was released by Hasbro in 1991 as the pilot of the Battlecopter, an odd specialism for Cobra's leading torture and information extractor, but the design of the figure was very cool with a slick grey, purple, black and silver deco with red highlights. He came with a rifle that had a strange claw on the end just in case you wanted to annoyingly pluck your enemy's clothing before or after shooting them. His file card highlights the secrecy and mystery behind his character. No one knows who he is or where he is from, but they do know that he is the best at extracting info from the most obstinate of prisoners, and he can also fly a helicopter good. He uses a voice modulator, so I expect he sounds a little something like this. I'm impressed. No one has been able to get out of you. What you did with the map. The second version of the character was released as a Mail Away 2 pack with Major Altitude version 2 in 1993. It was the exact same mould as version 1, only this time the colour scheme was drastically different with a neon yellow, purple grey and black colouring. His helicopter specialty was highlighted once again in the dual file card that came in the bag set and he was given a knife and a black figure stand for accessories. Good luck using that against Altitude and his gun. In 2006, a third version of Interrogator was included in the Viper Lockdown 6 pack, which also included G.I. Joe Colton version 2, G.I. Jane and 3 Viper Guards. His deco was very similar to the original version 1 figure, but he was made using a number of different parts from 2003. His torso, waist and legs were previously used to create Cobra Claws, Commander and Tomax and Zaymot version 3 from that year, and his arms were previously used to create Cobra Commander version 14. His head was an entirely new sculpt however, he came with two knives, a pistol that fit into the holster on his chest and that standard issue black figure stand because display. No change in his file card meant that his background continued to be shrouded in mystery. The fourth and penultimate version of this intriguing character was released by the G.I. Joe Collectors Club as part of the 2010 International G.I. Joe Convention exclusive Vacation in the Shadows box set. The set also included the Black Major, Flint version 16, 6 Red Shadows and 6 Red Torches. Full Force. The deco was a simple black and grey and he was created using the torso of Snake Eyes version 4 from 1991, the arms, waist and legs of Red Star also from 1991 and what was really cool with this particular incarnation, a new head based on the 12 inch soldiers of the world European G.I. Joe from 1966. This was the first and only time we have seen Interrogator's face as even the FSS version has a balaclava on underneath. Interrogator was largely underused in the Marvel run, but did get a much bigger part in the Devil's Due Image comic during America's Elite World War III as a member of the Plague. In his first appearance in issue 27 and leading into 28, he kidnaps Duke and his father and makes Duke watch while he feeds his dad lies about his son. Bit dark. The Plague were a group of specialists throughout all of the fields of Cobra brought together by Cobra Commander in an attempt to mirror the success of the Joe team rather than throwing hordes of faceless troops at the problem. Interrogator joined a number of different characters in the Plague roster and donned the all-black uniform that the whole team wore. He made a few appearances in the Deke cartoon as well. In Long Live Rock and Roll Part 1, he impresses Cobra Commander with his powers of persuasion until old Snakeface realises he used the same techniques on him to get a pay rise. Excellent work, Interrogator. You certainly sold those airheaded Sonic types a bill of goods. A mere trifle, Commander, compared to the job I did persuading you to give me a raise in pay. What? The FSS figure Justin is looking at today is the fifth version of the character and relates to the version 1 Battlecopter pilot from 1991. So without further ado, here is Justin with the review. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. This is Justin from GeneralsJoes.com, and once again, we're looking at a G.I. Joe Collectors Club figure subscription service 4.0 figure. Uh, shipment number four, I believe this is, that uh, just arrived within the past week or two. Uh, I'm a little bit delayed on getting these out there. I apologize, but hopefully um, we'll get these posted ASAP and make up for some lost time. But obviously the shining star of, of Shipment 8 would be uh, Billy, Cobra Commander's son, the first time we've gotten that figure in many, many years. 
um, ever. Uh, but the second figure in this little fourth shipment is no slouch either. It's the uh, Cobra Information Extractor, codename Interrogator. The package, we're looking at the package first, and obviously the package is, is vintage style, as we've seen so many times before. A great piece of artwork of the Interrogator that, again, looks like some original art. Doesn't look like it was kind of repurposed from vintage style. Uh, so once again, I'm assuming that's an Adam Rich's piece. Um, if it's not, somebody please correct me. Um, but you can see a yeah, codename interrogator. He's got his handcuffs right there. He's got his little silenced pistol here. Um, what looks like, I mean, they kind of look like nunchucks, but I'm going to pretend they're stun batons of some kind or some kind of cattle prod or something more suitable for an interrogator. And he's got that great Cobra Commander kind of Cobra handled knife, which I like. Um, but he looks pretty good in the package. Um, I'm not real wild about that helmet or that web gear, but we will talk about that more during the actual video review itself. Uh, do not worry about that. And taking a look at the back of the package, you've got his file card here, which outlines a bunch of different um, different items. Most of that, I think, is, is cribbed from the vintage file card. Uh, that's typically what the Collector's Club does when they repurpose the vintage figures, is pretty much take their file card and, and pull that right forward. Uh, G.I. Joe Club exclusive for figure 10. So I think I've been saying it wrong. I think I was saying this is the fourth shipment. I believe it's actually the fifth shipment because next shipment is the last. And the last shipment would be shipment six. So yeah, this is the actual fifth shipment of FSS 4.0. And so far I've done video reviews for every single one and I don't plan on stopping now. So you can see the big sample of the artwork there. I really like how the um, the mask and the web gear looks in the artwork. Uh, unfortunately, on the figure itself, it doesn't look quite as good. But they did a very good job. If it, if this was indeed Adam Richards, which I, Riches, which I believe it was, but um, I, I may be wrong on that. But if it was, he did a good job kind of translating the accuracy of the details of these little pockets, the little black straps there, the cobra symbol on the chest, the pattern of the web gear, even the weapons themselves. He does a really excellent job of properly um, showing the, the figure as it appears in the package, in the package art, which is really nice. Uh, the package looks excellent, and we will be cracking this open and doing an in-hand review coming up next, so stick around. Thank you very much. We are looking here tonight at the G.I. Joe Collectors Club Figure Subscription Service 4.0 Interrogator, this time out of his plastic prison. Had to bust this guy out first. I uh, really wanted to get my hands on him. Yeah, it's been uh, 30 years since we got a Billy figure, but... Um, Anyway, Interrogator looked like he was a lot of fun, so I wanted to crack him open first. And I've got him out here all well-equipped, uh, all in his plastic glory. Uh, I have a little affinity for the Interrogator, personally. I've featured him pretty heavily in some of my um, Dio stories. So I'm pretty excited to get a modern version of this figure out there. And uh, the Collector's Club answered my, my uh, many requests with uh, by giving giving us an updated modern version of the interrogator uh, the execution of the figure itself um, is not something I'm ecstatic about but it's it's not bad uh, seeing him in the package I had uh, some issues with him but those issues are not quite as serious in person but they're not great either so we will kind of cover those as we look at this here tonight as you can see the interrogator has Retaliation Cobra Commander arms, I believe, and torso, although those lower arms, um, yeah, I believe it's the Retaliation Cobra Commander arms and torso with the pursuit of Cobra Arctic Destro legs. The result is the legs are a little bit long for the arms, um, makes them look a little bit out of proportion, but not terribly out of proportion. He still looks pretty decent. He's got some great paint apps, uh, paint trim. Obviously, the jacket is gray, as his vintage version was. He's got Black pads here, silver there, silver trim on the knee pads, on the soles of the boot, even on this little weird handle on the back. He's got his red stripes on the leg, which is really cool, on both sides. That is a pretty nice touch as a little homage to the original version. Uh, the pad, uh, or the web gear, is, is all black. Uh, the original version had kind of like a black, um, it was more of a dark blue with a black cross hatch web gear over it. So this is a little bit of a different look, although this ties back to the 2011 convention set fairly well. That 2011 convention set had kind of like mountain mountaineering web gear on it. And as you can see, one of the issues we're having here is that uh, this little knife and sheath, it does not want to stay in that hole very well. Uh, the web gear you might recognize is coming with one of the Mars Troopers, I believe, or the Mars Officer from the original Rise of Cobra 3-pack, the first introduction to the Rise of Cobra figures that we had. 
and um, that's where he's got it. I'm not wild about that. It kind of it's kind of snug to his torso. Uh, it's not very exciting. It doesn't look very comfortable. He's got that top strap kind of up around his neck, um, which seems a little funky. Uh, we can get a little closer up on that the web gear to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, it's it doesn't look great. I could think of a few different other alternatives, or you know, even if he didn't have the web gear on at all, I think he'd probably look okay. Um, thankfully, you know, that's something that you can control. I mean, the web gear is a separate piece, so if, if you really don't like it, like, um, you know, I'm not crazy about it, you can remove it, swap it out for something else, or do whatever you want with it. Um, he comes with this great silenced pistol, um, shades of Metal Gear Solid right there. Uh, he's got this Cobra-themed knife that also came with the Retaliation Cobra Commander originally. Um, you'll you'll notice a lot of times the collectors club kind of shares little tooling groups where if they're tool if they're choosing uh, tools from a certain mold for body parts they'll often include some of those same weapons too. Um, he's got these. Uh, I've seen them called nunchucks. They kind of are nunchucks, but I think they kind of look enough like cattle prods or some kind of electric probe or something to work as a torture device. I'm I'm okay with that. Uh, the handcuffs are. Another cool addition, every every torture master needs his own set of handcuffs, so I can see why they included those as well. All in all, a pretty decent weapons complement, not a ton of gear, um, but for somebody who kind of hangs around Cobra, the Cobra base only to um, poke and prod people and torture them, I guess it doesn't, he doesn't need to be real heavily equipped. Also, along with all these, he's got a removable helmet, which um, I will try to remove. It's... On there pretty tight, to be honest with you. It was originally designed, this, this removable helmet came with the convention set that I talked about before in 2011. Um, but it, it went on a different head. It went on kind of a small, real American hero O-ring style head. So, um, obviously in this case it looks like they used the head from the Rise of Cobra Sergeant Flash. Uh, I'm a little bit uh, curious as to why they chose to give him a masthead this time, since they didn't in 2011. Um, we kind of know what he looks like already. I mean, I guess that's to uh, prevent having to tool up a new head, although I would think they could have found an, a different head to kind of replicate that original version. But there's, there's what he looks like without the helmet on. Um, it's an okay look. You know, obviously I prefer the helmet. And really, if you want to know the truth, I think there's something they could have done that would be even better, and it's a kind of an odd choice they made, since they did use the Retaliation Cobra Commander torso and arms. Uh, one's got to wonder why they didn't just use the, the head as well. Um, I'm going to pop his head off. Uh, because obviously, I mean, there shouldn't be a fit issue, since this is Cobra Commander's torso already. Uh, no, no fit issue. It fits on there nice and snug. Um, I would have thought if they just kind of painted that faceplate red... That would have been a very cool update to the interrogator right there. I think that would have looked really effective and would have represented him well. I don't know if there's any copyright issues since that is a G.I. Joe retaliation part. Maybe they can use the torso and arms, but they can't use the head. Uh, I don't know how that all works, but um, this would seem almost like a kind of a no-brainer, so I'm kind of curious as to why they didn't do it. Let me get a little close-up shot there. So you can imagine if that faceplate was red, that'd be a pretty cool rendition of Cobra, Com of, uh, Cobra Commander, of Interrogator, I would think. But anyway, that's a, that's a look at the interrogator figure itself as my camera goes wacky on the zooms. Um, so next we are going to take a look at how this figure kind of compares to other versions of interrogator. So keep on watching. Now we're looking at this group of all four versions of the interrogator. Well, technically all four. There was a, a different mail away version of this original interrogator that was in some pretty crazy yellow colors. It was actually pretty fun, but I didn't bother to include him just because I'm trying to stick with this consistent paint scheme all the way across. But uh, as you can see, he obviously takes several visual cues from the original interrogator, including the blue pants, which are a little bit lighter, but are a decent match. The silver trim around the boots and the black boots are kind of pulled from this version of the interrogator, uh, as well as the gray vest. He's got a darker gray jacket compared to these two versions here. This is the original version, came out in 92, I believe. This is the 2004 direct-to-consumer version, which is, I think, all things created equal. is probably my favorite version of the interrogator they've released, mostly because his helmet is especially badass. Uh, it's a little bit different, but also similar. So um, I, I really like this version of the interrogator a lot. And obviously, the specially crafted separate web gear is a very close approximation of the original. Uh, then we have the 2011 convention version, which was kind of a mountaineering version of the interrogator. And as I mentioned before, he had that kind of snug-fitting web gear 
which that version kind of replicates, though not really. Uh, and this version also in first introduced this removable helmet that this version now has as well. Um, as you can see in this particular interrogator, the I'm going to pull them up so I don't knock them over. The helmet comes off to reveal um, Mr. Uh, innocuous looking uh, Sandy blonde man, um, which really, you know, is, is relatively meaningless. It was kind of interesting because his head actually kind of resembles a 12 inch vintage GI Joe head. So a lot of people were wondering, Hmm, is this kind of some trying to be some kind of tie back to the adventure team? Uh, but ultimately that little theory didn't really go anywhere. Um, and all you end up with is a, really broad chested dude with a really tiny head covered by this, this mask. I, I appreciate what the club was trying to do with a removable helmet. It didn't work out especially well in that case. Um, or in this case, I don't think I, I really am not crazy about the way the removable helmet looks, um, with the FSS interrogator either. I would have much preferred, like I mentioned already, the Cobra commander head sculpt from retaliation. Um, even if they could have tooled this bad boy up to fit a modern figure, that would have been amazing. But, uh, unfortunately they didn't. But you can get a good idea of kind of where some of the different visual cues were drawn. Um, the, the DTC direct-to-consumer version and the original version obviously are extremely close. Um, you know, they, they dressed him up a little bit, made him look a little bit more European as far as, you know, the, the dictator-type jacket and jack boots and stuff. But all in all, um, he obviously resembles those other versions, you know, relatively closely. He's got some slight different color variations. But uh, all told, that is pretty much, you know, what he was based on. And they did a pretty effective job of updating that scheme. I don't mind when they make some changes, make things a little bit more modern, a little bit more interesting. Uh, in this case, he looks all right. Um, I, I think he's probably my third favorite out of the four. I think my ranks probably go DTC. This guy a close second. This guy probably third. And then the 2011 convention version, which I actually do like. I, I don't mind the figure. I think it's a great figure, save for the weird head. All four of them are pretty decent, uh, but uh, I think ultimately the two older versions are the ones I prefer. Uh, and this is a look kind of how in this interrogator shapes up with the rest of the interrogators released over the past 30 years. And uh, we'll take a look at one last look at the figure coming up. Uh, don't move, hit and run. You are my prisoner. I will kill you and Viper. Ah. Uh, uh. uh. And that, in a nutshell, is 15 years worth of bio story storytelling right there. I mentioned before that I, I featured Interrogator quite a bit in my dial stories, and that is true. Um, you can go to generalsjoes.com to check some of those out. And his arch enemy kind of within those stories was Hit and Run, and, um, and Viper was kind of involved in this little triangle too. So it's especially neat to me that the G.I. Joe Collectors Club has featured all three of these figures in various figure subscription services. It's, it's really fun to kind of see this triumvirate of triumvirate of characters all come together and form a, a little group. Uh, it's pretty cool. I really like that. I don't know if that was purposeful on their part. I, I doubt it, but um, I will take full credit for the fact that they included all those great characters within the figure subscription service. So just in conclusion, Interrogator is not a bad figure. He's got pretty decent range of motion with um, relatively modern parts. Uh, he's got the double joint knees. He's got the regular jointed elbows. He does not have the enhanced articulation in his wrists. Um, he's got, you know, the, the ball head, as they all do. He's got the torso crunch. Um, it's a pretty decent all-in-all -all, uh, version of, of the Cobra Interrogator character. There are some things I would have rather have fixed. I would have liked to have seen a different head used. I would have liked to see some different web gear used. Um, but those two things are things that I can fix myself for not a whole lot of money. So, um, but at the end of the day, when you're paying, you know, close to 30 bucks for an FSS figure, you'd rather get a figure that you don't have to fix at all. So, um, so anyway, but I, I do think the club did a great job with the character choice. I'm glad they included interrogator. Uh, they did a pretty decent job on the base build. Uh, there are a couple enhancements that I would have liked to have seen them make. We'll probably make myself, but ultimately not a bad figure. If you want to see the full written review of my star ratings and everything, head over to generalsjoes.com and go to my uh, G.I. Joe Collectors Club review page. Uh, the link's right in that top menu, and you can kind of check out a more full-fledged image and text-heavy review. But for now, that's my look at the G.I. Joe Collectors Club figure subscription service 4.0 interrogator shipment number 5. One more shipment to go, and then it's on to FSS 5.0. JoeCon's coming up in two weeks. Hopefully, um, you guys will all enjoy your time there, and I'll be following along very closely, and uh, we will 
Be sure to, to talk about all sorts of great news and information revealed at JoeCon in Loveland, Colorado. Uh, you need more information on that, hit GIJoeCon.com. Thanks, as always, to Chris McLeod for his help from the Full Force podcast. And if you liked what you saw here, like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you didn't like it, leave me a comment. Let me know what I can improve. And uh, me and the interrogator will catch you later. Thanks for watching this review by Justin Bell of GeneralsJoes.com and What's on Joe Mind, and from myself, Chris McLeod, aka Diagnostic80 from The Full Force. If you've enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and let us know what you think on any of our numerous social networking platforms. Goodbye, and see you next time for another Generals Review.